before you go, we have some literature we'd like you to take with you. It explains some of the background and details of our work here. Dr. Susan Wheeler, a surgical resident at Boston Memorial Hospital, is devastated when her friend, Nancy Greenlee, a young healthy woman, is left brain dead after undergoing a routine procedure there. Her suspicions are aroused when, soon after, another young and otherwise healthy patient also falls comatose during knee surgery. Susan investigates and discovers that over the previous year an unusual number of other fit, young patients have suffered the same fate and that all surgeries took place in operating room number 8. Those patients also had a tissue type sample taken before being transferred to the Jefferson Institute, a remote care facility. Susan's physician boyfriend, Mark Bellows, believes it is merely coincidence. Susan offends Chief of Anesthesiology, Dr. George, by asking to review the relevant patient charts. Increasingly isolated and under mounting pressure from superiors and colleagues, Susan also begins doubting Mark's trustworthiness. She visits the hospital morgue where a post-mortem is being performed on Nancy, who has since died. Susan asks the pathologists on ways someone could deliberately be put into a coma without detection. One pathologist suggests carbon monoxide poisoning. Dr. Harris, the chief of surgery, has twice reproached Susan about her recent behavior and interaction with Dr. George. He warns that she could be dismissed and insists she speak with a psychiatrist as a condition of her staying on. He is sympathetic, however, and has her take the weekend off to cope with her grief and stress over Nancy's death. She and Mark spend a relaxing weekend at the seaside. While driving back to Boston, Susan sees a highway sign for the Jefferson Institute and wants to go there. Mark waits in the car while Susan enters the austere building. Nurse Emerson greets Susan and explains the facility is closed to visitors, but says there is a physician's tour on Tuesday. Soon after, Kelly, a hospital maintenance worker who tipped off Susan that her suspicions about or number eight are correct, is fatally electrocuted by an unknown man. Based on his assertions, Susan searches in the hospital basement and finds a tank with a line leading from it, through the ventilation system, to or number eight. The man who killed Kelly has been stalking Susan. Late one night, he attempts to attack her at the hospital. After a brief struggle, Susan barely escapes and traps him in the anatomy lab's cadaver cooler. Susan joins the turf for what is apparently an advanced, low-cost care facility for comatose patients. She leaves the tur to secretly investigate the restricted areas. Susan discovers that the institute is a front for an international human organ black market. Patients' organs are being sold to the highest bidder. Boston Memorial purposely induces comas in select patients whose organs match potential buyers. The patients are rendered brain-dead via carbon monoxide being pumped from a hidden tank in the basement to the anesthesia equipment in operating room number 8. The line is controlled by a radio signal. Jefferson security spots Susan on surveillance cameras, but she escapes atop an ambulance as it leaves the compound to transport harvested organs to the airport. Susan, believing Dr. George is the operation's mastermind, rushes to Dr. Harris to share what she has discovered. Dr. Harris offers Susan a drink, and she quickly becomes incapacitated and experiences severe abdominal pain mimicking appendicitis. Susan realizes she has been drugged and that George is actually Dr. George Harris. Susan, barely conscious, is rushed to surgery where Dr. Harris will perform an appendectomy. As Susan is prepped for surgery, staff inform Dr. Harris that or number seven is ready. His vehement insistence on using or number eight arouses Mark's suspicions. Mark locates the gas line going from the basement to or eight and destroys it. To Dr. Harris's shock, Susan awakens after surgery. Two police officers are waiting outside to arrest Dr. Harris. <laughs> 